Hey everybody, I'm back. So I've been busy here, I've just been having a huge amount of fun with this. Um, this has been a daily series for the first uh, week or so, um, and it seems like that might continue for quite a while, just because I have so many things I want to be doing here that um, I'll, I'll have, pretty much every day I'll have uh, some good footage I can record. Because we haven't gotten to any um, any grindy bits or anything where I just have to go off and do something for a long time and wouldn't have any good footage for it. But yeah, having lots of fun. Um, anyway, so this is actually take two. Uh, I tried to record the first bit of this episode, but I uh, had a spectacular uh, Windows crash, which ended up corrupting my OBS footage. Did a lot of work to try and recover it, but uh, in the end that just wasn't feasible. Um, I could go into a whole story about that, but it's probably not that interesting. Uh, anyway, so, bottom line is, I'm, I'll have to re-record a little bit of this. But we didn't do anything too amazing, I can, I can recap it pretty well. So, um, well, before, uh, I'll look at some other stuff while I talk about that. Um, I built a little bit of machinery out here. Uh, I have a Railcraft Coke Oven and Blast Furnace, uh, just so I can start producing some rails. Because I'd like to set up a rail line in the nether, you need some charcoal. Um, ah, I have some in here. I'd like to set up a rail line in the nether, because I went, I went in there again, and located a nether fortress. Um, it was about 900 blocks away from my portal, so kind of a long way to walk. Uh, I made it there, and managed to claim just a few blaze rods, and almost get back to home before I starved, because I didn't bring enough food. But, uh, I got at least a few blaze rods for some stuff. Um, I've already used them up to make this ender pouch and ender chest here. So we have a place to dump our inventory if, um, if we're out and about and want to make sure stuff is safe, uh, just in case I die and can't get back to my stuff. Uh, this other kind of ender chest just came from a roguelike dungeon. I've actually found two others of those, so we'll have plenty of them to explore. Um, I've also been tipped off that, uh, there may be blazes in the lower levels of those, so we'll definitely have to go check those out. That might just be more convenient than, uh, going to the nether for them, since the fortress is so far away. Um, so in previous, uh, seasons of this series, I used a, um, I used a to-do chest, which was kind of a double-edged sword. I liked it because it kept me organized, but I didn't like it because I ended up stuffing it way too full of stuff that wasn't really wasn't really directly related. So I just sort of have a very haphazard episode almost every time where I jump around between all sorts of different stuff and uh, just try to hurry and get it all done. So what I'm trying to do here is just focus on a few things at a time, or maybe just one thing per episode, and, um, you know, not, not need a reminder for myself to, uh, to do those things. Um, but I have put this chest here with just a few things that I want to look at in sequence right now. Um, so I might use that if I get, like, a collection of interesting dungeon loot that's worth demonstrating, like what I have here. Uh, so, well, some of this isn't dungeon loot. So I went exploring in my world, and, uh, filled out the map a little bit more. There's some real interesting biomes. Uh, I was collecting trees while I was out. Uh, there's a lot of different trees to get. And I've planted pretty much all the unique ones that I've gotten back here. This is an origin tree, which uh, is basically an oak tree from uh, Minecraft Alpha, I believe. I never played Minecraft Alpha, but I've, I know what they look like from having seen other people's videos. Uh, what is this? This is Sil Silver Bell? Yep. Um, birch, I didn't have one of those before. Pink cherry, white cherry, these are from Biomes of Plenty. The uh, Sakura tree is also kind of a pink cherry, but it's it's from Natura, so that's different. This is fuse wood. Uh, this comes from the nether. Watch what happens when you chop it. That's kind of fun. I was standing real close to it the first time I did that. It gave me quite a scare. Doesn't actually destroy anything, just uh, damages you a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is one of the four materials you can build those special nether bows from. Uh, if you were looking in the chest, I've, I've already made one of those out of bloodwood. We'll be, we'll be taking a look at it in a moment. I want to get another sapling and replant this. Um, so over here we have dark wood. Um, that came from a very nifty biome called uh, Ominous Woods, I think it was. It was way up north. Um, I'm definitely going to want to build something in that biome. I'd like to like to go up there and show you guys if it wasn't so far away, because it's a it's a super cool place. 
It's it's very ominous indeed, but I, I liked it a lot. Um, another interesting one was the Mystic Grove biome. So something I've observed is that uh, biomes are plenty. See, I, I always want to say a plenty, but it's 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 like it's biomes of plenty, which makes less sense to me. So I just when I'm when I'm saying it out loud, I just say a plenty like that, because um, that makes more sense to my brain. Uh, it's it seems like there are no vanilla biomes. I've never run into anything that's not a um, uh, biomes a plenty biome. Um, so it seems like it just it's just a total replacement. Maybe that's not true. Maybe the the vanilla ones are just rare. Maybe I just haven't been lucky enough to run into them. Um, but anyway, that's that's just something I've observed. Uh, ob uh, observed, yeah, observed. <laughs> um, so the Mystic Grove has these magic trees which give off really cool particles. And the leaves look really good. I could definitely see myself building something with these leaves. I haven't really uh, taken a look at all the plank types yet. That's that's more of a... I don't know. That's, that's more effort than I've gone to so far. They also have these jacaranda trees, however you pronounce that. Um, they're also kind of pretty. Let's see what else. We got the pine tree here. And acacia. I already saw the ghost wood. I think that's all the interesting ones. Also collected these berries from the nether. Uh, none of them are... They don't seem to grow very well in the overworld. They grow very slowly. Refuse to do it on dirt. I tried netherrack. Now I'm trying soul sand to see if they'll do any better. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah. So that's that's the, the... Oh, right. Maple. That's another new one. And there were a few I saw that I, I couldn't carry while I was out. So more trees to collect. So, this thing, um, I realized, uh, I'd actually read in the factorization manual, um, last episode, it just didn't really register in my brain, that you can put a barrel in front of this, and it'll just process its contents, instead of, um, having to place a single block there each time. So, let's just go ahead and do that, and start processing some of this iron. So, that's just grinding down the barrel contents, and it'll give us dirty iron gravel, which I already did in, uh, take one of this. Um, the item I was looking for to craft stuff with liquids is a liquid crafter from Mine Factory Reloaded. So, this is not quite like a fabricator, but it does a pretty good job. So, I replaced this center source block of water with an aqueous accumulator, which is supplying both the water boiler there and this liquid crafter with, with water. This thing crafts once per redstone pulse, as far as I can tell, and I haven't found a way to change that. So, um, that just makes a whole bunch of that. I need to, need to put, like, a really fast timer on there, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I'll figure out a way to have this happen automatically. Or maybe there's a way to tell it to just craft, uh, continuously. Um, yeah, this is a pain for 40. Especially since it's two clicks per toggle with a lever. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out a way to fix that. Wait, did it stop? Oh, it ran out of water! Okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out a way to have that go continuously. Anyway, um, so right, let's get that in the slag furnace. So, uh, alternative ways of powering this up. Um, right, so we have the water boiler. It's not super fast with just this many mirrors, and I don't want to just cram this area full of mirrors. Uh, there is this calorimetric burner, which I, I believe they actually meant calorimetric. Because calorimetric is not a word, that one is, and I think it means what they what they mean it to mean. Uh, so that thing, we we looked at it very briefly. It burns food and uh, turns it into charge at a pretty good rate. So I've just been chucking rotten flesh in there and uh, letting that generate my charge. So let's let's do some of that now. It's a little weird how it works. I click on it, four of them go in there, and then it just sort of burns them slowly. Um, let's do that. Make some noises. Yeah, so it's working. That's that's spinning again. This battery should charge back up pretty quick. At least it did the first time I uh, first time I did that, because that seems to generate quite a lot more. Let's see. I have a charge meter. <laughs> that noise. Yep, battery's charging up. So that thing is far more powerful than these mirrors. These these would never actually charge this battery at all. I assume there's a minimum amount of charge that has to be in the system for the for the battery's charge to go up. 
but this thing charges it right back up and uh, is also powering these things at the same time and it makes crazy noises. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to do today was to start getting into Thomcraft because I'd like to see if the Infernal Furnace still exists and if it does, if it'll still give me extra uh, metal nuggets for the things that uh, I crystallize. I've already gone ahead and just smelted my dark iron ore normally because dark iron nuggets aren't a thing that exists. So even if that is true with the Infernal Furnace still, uh, it wouldn't be for dark iron. Um, let's take a nap so the zombie horde doesn't completely overrun us. So, um, I, I was kind of torn between Thumbcraft and Galacticraft. I really want to go to space, but, uh, Thumbcraft is just a little bit more, a bit more of an immediate need. Um, I just want to get to space. Uh, there's plenty more, uh, I can do in other areas. <laughs> Those villagers just attract so many zombies. Right, so I didn't finish going through this chest. I only got, only got to one item in it. Um, so I found this thing. It's it has a crazy title, uh, but it's a it's a book you you can read. I don't remember where it came from, and I'm not sure exactly what it's describing here. This is a long story telling about some sort of altar. They go journey to find it. Um, obelisks, altar, shape. Uh, heard a horrific noise. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm I'm not even sure what it's describing, but um, <laughs> that's an interesting ending. I haven't actually read what's in between yet. So maybe this is forbidden magic. That's plausible. Uh, could be blood magic. I don't know. Also found this. This tells you what it's from. Yeah, that just says Minecraft. I don't I don't know. Um, so this is one page of an adventurer's diary. Just about finding Stronghold and activating Ender Portal. End Portal. Um, this right here is an interesting sort of thing. I've heard some bad things about that, and in, in the first take of this, I've verified them for myself. So what I'd heard about this is you never, ever want to plant it, because it does terrible things to your world. Um, basically grows a tree that's way too big, and just, yeah... Uh, all the all the consequences that come with that. Um, so we're going to do it here in a in a creative world. There are actually two sacred saplings. There's also the sacred uh, the sacred oak sapling, which is a oops, uh, which is a much more reasonable one. Let's let's grow one of each. All right, creative mode. You break things slower, weirdly. All right, so put that there and grow it. Hopefully, yeah, there it goes. So that's a pretty big tree, but it's it's manageable. You know, it grew in a in a reasonable amount of time, and it doesn't just overtake the entire world. But this one is a little bit different. Let's find a kind of clear spot. Actually, I don't think it even really cares. Let's just plant it here. So I'm gonna hold hold right click on it. When we stop seeing bone meal sparkles, okay, that's that's now. That means it's grown. It's gonna take like two minutes to generate all the blocks of this. Um, last time I logged out of this world to let it do its thing. I'm gonna leave myself here this time and see how long it takes and what it looks like once the tree has grown. Here it goes. Okay, so it's grown. You can see how far up it goes. Everything in the area is in shadow. And it extends all the way out there. Let's do um, F3A. Alright, so that's how big the trunk is. It goes all the way up to here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me, uh... That's how you spell torch. So that is a lot of rubber wood. Way more than anybody's ever going to need. And this goes an unbelievable uh, distance. Way more than the uh, number of chunks that, that render on far render distance. So, uh, let's just keep flying out here. We'll, we'll reach the edge of it eventually. Here it is. So yeah, sacred oak sapling is reasonable. Sacred rubber sapling is not. It is just pure insanity. Yeah, it's gone all the way up through the clouds. Pretty much all the way up to the height limit. 
Yep. And that is, that's all rubber leaves with rubber wood logs inside them. Looks kind of crazy on the inside if you go in here. Uh, well, I guess I can't get into a good spot, but it's, it's a little more sparse toward the outer edges. Anyway, so all that to say, don't ever grow a sacred rubber sapling. So what we're going to do is uh, put that one away in a place where we won't ever accidentally plant it if we're going for normal rubber saplings. If we get a sacred oak sapling, that'd be fun to grow. Now, this one, I could see myself maybe growing it on like an, an island way out in the ocean. That might be fun. Um, but also kind of pointless, just because it's it wouldn't really do me any good. I'd never harvest the rubber wood. Just, um, yeah, so I, I probably wouldn't actually do that. So up here in my attic, I have this chest for kind of dumping things that are either duplicates or I just don't expect to ever use. Um, so, right, extra logic matrix programmers, extra tools that I already have, radio stations, um, and other stuff is going to go in there. So, right, that builder's wand, uh, I have two of them. Let's take a look at what it does. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is an extra utilities thing. Extra utilities seems to document its stuff in not enough items usage. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this basically is just, it, it assists you with building uh, by placing blocks out of your inventory of the same type as what you click on a bunch at a time. So if I click here, that's placed nine of those. I can do it again, I can do it on that surface. Yeah, it's it's a pretty neat little item. So I won't make too much of a mess in my house, but I could I could see myself using that for some types of builds. Probably oh well I can't see it from here. Might have been might have made my life a little easier for uh, placing the the um, abyssal stone roof above above my head because that was a pain to do by hand. But anyway, that's that's what that tool does. Uh, we also found some flippers in a chest somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where they are. Uh, these let me swim faster, so normal swim speed is like this. And with flippers on, oh hey, that's that's ripe. Let's let's harvest it in a moment. With flippers on, it's noticeably faster. So those are pretty nice. Um, I'll have to have to take them with me if I'm um, if I'm going on any long journeys that are going to involve swimming. So uh, one of them had already grown last time. I I picked it. Um, I used a fortune pick on it because, uh, fortune will actually affect things like grass and wheat and nether warts and certain other things and give you more seeds back. I got one seed back from, from that. Let's see what this does. And a pearl and one seed. Okay. So it seems like, uh, it seems like it just gives you one seed back each time. So that's fine. As I find more in dungeons, I can expand my thing. But um, it's it's not going to be expandable just by farming them. I've also heard these grow faster on endstone, but I don't don't have access to endstone yet, so I'm just growing them slowly. And I have enough ender pearls to go to the end now, um, so those aren't too big a concern. But they'll be nice for uh, farming them once we've um, once we run out of our current supply. All right, so right one more thing in here the bloodwood bow So I didn't actually get a chance to try this before my uh, game client crashed last time uh, So let's see. I hope it doesn't do it again um, Let me just pause the recording here to make sure I have a nice clean uh, break in the footage just in case this screws me up again Be back in a sec All right, here we go. Let's see what happens Okay, okay Cool cool no crashes. All right, so it wasn't the bloodwood bow's fault so the question is, how is it different from a regular bow? Does it just look different? Does it have more durability? Does it do more damage? I'd like a uh, test subject to shoot with it, although this bow's enchanted, so that would throw off the, um, the test. Maybe it shoots farther. Okay, so regular bow, shooting like that, lands there. It doesn't seem to pull back faster. That lands in about the same place. All right, so my suspicion... Okay, it does have much more durability. It might be more enchantable. Oh, another thing I wanted to, to mention is, um, so these bronze tools and their insane enchantability, um, I have actually changed that in the mechanism configuration file, um, because I think it's just an error that they're set, whoa, that they were set uh, as they were. 
and uh, the enchantability was uh, configurable. So I just looked at the uh, enchantability values for some similar materials and set all of the bronze, osmium, and steel ones to be equivalent to iron and the glowstone and lapis ones to be equivalent to um, gold. So um, those are not quite so broken because they just because of the enchantability they just outclassed everything else by so much that there is no reason to look into things like um you know redstone arsenal or uh other interesting things until i was uh until i was at the point where i could just put uh level 30 books onto everything assuming you can uh, enchant redstone arsenal stuff with with books um so i just wanted to change that so i'd have a reason to use other stuff okay well that seemed like a reasonable enchant for that level. Well, let's go ahead and use it. We know it'll last longer. Okay, yeah, those both have power 2 now, so we can compare their damage amounts, at least kinda. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try that next time I see a monster of some sort. Oh yeah, that's opening that. It's, it has, a, has an open icon now. I like it. Can still put it into itself. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, so we got past all that. Um, now it is time to do some thaumaturgy. So let's see, map goes away here. So last time I played with Thumbcraft was in version 3. We're now in Thumbcraft 4, and everything has changed. So the very first thing we needed to do back then was to craft a wand. Let's assume that's still true. And um, I've seen a little bit of this in a mod spotlight. I think the first one we want to make is this iron-capped wooden wand. That's the, the entry-level one. So we need a stick and two of these iron caps. Looks simple enough. So let's see about that. And uh, then we use that on a bookshelf to get a Thaumonomicon, assuming that's still the same. And that'll tell us what to do next. Now, do I know... Does this tell me anything? Okay, so we have some sort of weird UI up there. Uh, let's put down a bookshelf. And see if we can get a Thaumonomicon out of it. Hang on. Let, first... Let's see if not enough items. Oh, it doesn't... Maybe it's... Is it with an O? Yeah, it's with an O. Ah! Okay, this is the book that I saw in... Um, in one of the chests in the graveyard dungeon right before I blew it up. Uh, so I was wondering what that was. All right. So hopefully we can get that from it. Yeah, I'm just fiddling around here. Let's, uh, no, I have, I have books already. Um, okay. So I'll make a bookshelf, use the wand on it. Hopefully it'll work when there's nothing in it. I believe this wand can be used to drain aspects from nodes. I know where a couple of nodes are, so we'll try that. There we go. Cool. All right, so we have a Thaumonomicon. Huh. Huh. Okay. Lots of stuff. Well, that's not something I've ever seen before. Strange. Okay. So we should look for, um, look for these guys. Great wood, I got some of that. Silver wood, I got some of that. Shimmer leaf, cinder pearl. Mana pod, that's new. Magical forests. Hmm. Neat. Okay. I'll have to find some of those. Mm, those are all familiar. Those are all familiar, fairly. Oh, wait, what? Oh. Crystal clusters and a sort of a touch of clay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So crystal clusters no longer restore Vis. I think Vis is gone. Um, re replaced by Essentia. Okay, we got Cinnabar. That is not what it looks like. <laughs> That's a different texture. Got some Amber. Uh-huh. Yeah, thanks for telling me how to get the thing I already got. Mm-hmm. I have a few of those. Sh sure. Ooh. That's interesting. 
So are we not... Uh, Okay, the, the research table still exists, but apparently we want a thermometer and just explore and do stuff with it. Okay. All right, let's make ourselves a thermometer. Oh, wait, is this... Hang on. I might have been mistaken that the goggles are revealing are still necessary. It might just be... Oh, boy. Oh, boy, that gets complicated. Let's just make a thermometer first. How was that again? Um, it might just be the thermometer now, that, uh, that's all you need. Alright, so that was two shards, two gold, and a glass. Let's sleep so we don't get run over by the zombie army, as happens every night that I try to stay up. Alright, two shards, two gold. Uh, most plentiful is entropy. All right, so let's see. All right, so this thing lets me look at stuff. How was it? Ooh. Okay, am I getting research points? Is this is this doing something? Tell me, tell me more about that. Research points. Okay. Box items and creatures of the thermometer. Taking the research points you gathered from the first time, and expanding your aspect knowledge of the research table. I don't know where to see how many research points I have. Did that... Did that give me anything? Oh! Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Alright, so I got some research points from that. Got some from that. Oakwood gave me none, at least for a very long time, so maybe it just doesn't. Whoa. What the hell? What is this? Okay, I think that's from zombie awareness. There's these... Apparently they, they can smell you in some way. Um, oops. Oh! Oh, I see. Nothing can be learned from this. You do not have all the knowledge required to understand this. Okay, I see. Do not have all the knowledge required to understand this. Okay. Very interesting. Alright. Uh, let's go look at a node. This is very different. I know there's one out here in the uh, in the snow somewhere. And I think I can maybe use my wand to uh, absorb some... Let's look at the snow. If there's text there, I can't read it. Nothing can be learned from this. Okay. Where are you, node? I know you're around here. There it is, there it is. Yeah, so to the naked eye, this is visible, but it's very faint. Yeah, you can actually break those if you want. Um, all right, R node. Okay, normal. Gained okay, four research. I wish this text weren't so white and so small, so that's really hard to read. Okay, so can I do stuff with this? Uh huh. All right, so I'm drawing aspects from it. I don't. From what I hear, I don't want to deplete the aspects. Um, so let's draw a little bit more. I wish it would show me at the same time that I'm drawing them out. Because, yeah, from what I heard, if I, if I don't deplete them, then they'll regenerate. So let's just stop there, because I was about to, uh, about to deplete that lightning-y-looking one on the right. All right, so my wand has some aspects in it. I don't know what uh, <laughs> what I do with that yet, but that's just something I know I can do here. All right, let's research this. Cool, has a bunch of two of them. Can I fill them up? Looks like I probably can. Let's try. I wish I knew how many units uh, each of those things on the in the upper left was. Ooh, ooh, that's close. Okay, I almost drained it completely. That green mountainy one. That's probably Terra. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, so next step. Uh, tell me about research points. That's glowing. So it's telling me something. Aspects of magic. Oh, okay, so I learned something here. Aspects, primal compound. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, Lux's air plus Ignis. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh, I can learn what um, what aspects each item contains, and it'll remember and tell me. That's very cool. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, wait. Are those are these my are these my total research points here? Ah, that's why the torch showed me that because I had learned air and ignis. Or no, those are primal aspects. Do you have to learn those? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try scanning some other stuff. Give me some. Uh, how about some plants? Let's go back and look at our farm with this thing. Also, want to build a research table and see if that tells me a little more about what's going on because I still don't. I still have many questions. Can I scan water? Yep. All right. Lily pad. Don't have the knowledge required to understand this. Read. Nothing. Sugar cane. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, this could turn into a fairly time-consuming process. How about a carrot? Ah, whatever that is. Okay, okay, this zombie awareness thing is definitely getting in the way of, uh, of normal Thumbcraft gameplay. I may have to do something about it. Alright, so I'm not learning any new things here. Oh, okay, I learned something. Stone brick wall, cool. I discovered Saxum. Gained three research points for Saxum. Do not have all the required knowledge to understand this. Let's scan a cow. No, I don't want to scan the zombie scent. I want to scan the cow. Okay. Nothing. Don't have the required knowledge for this. Oh, stop. Stop that. Oh, this is such a pain. Okay, we, we got to fix that. All right. Um, maybe I'll... Okay, I've discovered Vitreous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is cool. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, this could be fairly time-consuming. Let's let's stop doing that. I'll, I'll mess with the zombie awareness mod and see if I can get it to stop putting those uh, scent things around, which might might change its behavior, but I think, I don't know, I don't care as much about it as being able to use Thomcraft seamlessly. Uh, so, let's see what the next step is. Uh, or as a node. Let me, uh, actually, let me, let me read through all of these things that are available to me, uh, and you guys don't need to watch me do that, but, uh, I'll learn a few things and be back in a sec. Alright, I read all the stuff that was available to me and got a pretty good idea of, uh, what we're doing. Basically what I need to do is just create a, uh, research table and start playing with it. The research table itself has gotten way more complicated, but the crafting recipe is the same. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, this does still exist, but it, it sort of means something else. So, uh, Essentia is an aspect in liquid form. This is an aspect in, I don't know what, what you call it, but inside the wand. Um, and, you know, aspects are just the what I used to call Essentia. Um, but it's nighttime, and I waited too long, and zombies have made it impossible to sleep. So I thought we could find one to uh, test out these bows here. This skeleton will do fine. So one shot with this bow. Did two and a half hearts. One with this. Did quite a bit more. Now, there's some randomness to these enchants. That could have been coincidence. Let's try this again. Okay, so you're full. You are now down two and a, uh, two and a half. And, uh, that was just two, okay. Seems inconclusive. Okay, so maybe this Bloodwood Bow does more damage, maybe not. I should have done an unenchanted one uh, with an unenchanted regular bow. That would give me more consistent results. Also an unarmored monster. Anyway, um, sun's up, so zombies will stop hassling me after a bit. Um, but I want to go ahead and make a research table. Which I think is pretty much the same thing. Let's see. So a table is, I think I remember the recipe. It's three slabs on top of two uh, planks. Is that right? 
Yeah, okay. We need two of them. And then we need scribing tools, which are glass bottle, feather, and ink. There's another one of those weird arrows that's not actually... Oh, there's two of them. One way down there and one way up here. It's not actually attached to me. Crazy. Um, right, so glass bottle I have over there somewhere. Ink and feather. Pretty low on feathers. I should set up a proper chicken farm instead of just the egg farm I have here. Oh, these are kind of funny. So, um... It seems like each uh, each tab in the book is like a different module or something of Thomcraft, and uh, down here we get to the the different mods um, that add stuff. So we have the up here are the the basic ones that are normally with Thomcraft, but here we have Thomic Tinkerer, which apparently does computer craft stuff. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, this is Forbidden Magic, uh, and it tells you a little bit about these shards. Um, so look at this. I, I, I don't know. I found this more amusing than I probably should. Uh, each of two do a different deadly sin. What do you suppose this one is? <laughs> um, so we got a sloth shard somehow. Oh, see, okay, so the sloth shard happened when, um, when I was blown up by that nitro creeper in the nether, I came back to two gravestones over top of each other, and when I broke the second one, the one that I wasn't familiar with, a sloth shard came out, so I don't really understand that yet. Uh, wrath shards just come from... Oh, interesting, okay. So they, they seem to just come from uh, killing things in the nether. I assume the more overkill I do, um, the more it... the more likely it is to get one. Um... Envy shards we know spawn with zombie pigmen, so we can steal them from them. Uh, haven't seen a pride shard up here yet. Maybe... Maybe if I kill a wither I'll get one? Something like that. Lust, I would assume, is maybe from breeding animals in the nether? And let's see, what's left? There's also, um... Which one do we get? Okay, so that's five. What are the other two? Trying to remember... I, I'm drawing a total blank. Um, yeah, I have no idea what those two are. Actually, I don't know what that is either. Anyway, um, so we'll, we'll learn more about that later. But we, we need to just get... Uh, Alright, so I don't know what this is. Looks like a Railcraft crowbar. Missing re required research. And this is Magic Piece, of course. Anyway, so let's make ourselves this research table. Um, there's a glass bottle. Is that shapeless crafting? Yes, okay, so scribing tools are there. This can go here, that's an okay spot for it. Alright, now, this is all completely different. So I think these are my research points. Let me, uh, let me refer to the Thalmanomicon one more time, figure out what, uh, hang on. If I just click one of these... Oh? Huh? What? Okay. Alright, I need some paper here. I think what I need to do is um, pick two of those to combine, and then if they combine... At, oh, that doesn't go there. Oh, that's for, um, for research. Don't I need to put paper into this somehow? I thought, uh, okay, let's go back here. Uh, research. And okay, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, finding a space of tables. Okay, scribing tools, located in slot one. All primal aspects in three. So what's two? Clicking those usually by dragging in rune circles in area four. Mm-hmm. Alright. If successful, you should see what was gained in the bottom right, and it should appear in area three. Ah, okay. Need to be carrying a set of scribing tools and paper. Well, hang on. I'm carrying paper. Do I need... I guess the scribing tools need to stay in the desk, and I need another... 
couple of them. Let's let's just be sure about that. Um, I'm gonna need to make another some more bottles. That's fine. And feather and ink sack. This is so totally. Oh, shut up, zombies! All right, I'm I'm gonna kill these zombies because they're driving me nuts. All right, zombies, shut up. I have scribing tools and paper on me. Let's see if we can make something happen here. So, primal aspects are. Hey, what are these shiny ones? All right, let's try Aqua and Terra. Okay, I've discovered Victus. Very cool. And I got three research points of it. I see, I see. Okay, I understand how the research points work now. All right, let's try... What do we have here? Okay, Air, Aqua, Ignis. Lux is not a primal aspect. Okay, primal aspects have the circle around it. I got it. Okay, I can't move that. All right. So, how about Ordo and Aqua? I've discovered Jellum. Cool. How about Ordo and Terra? Nothing. How about uh, we already did Aqua and Terra? Ignis and Aqua? No. Ignis and Terra? No. Ignis and Ordo? Yes. Potentia. Very cool. Ignis and Air. Is that actually spending? Yeah, okay, it is spending research points. Gained one research point for Lux, though. Okay. All right. Now, wasn't there more to this? I should... Uh, okay, I guess I just have to discover the, the aspects first, and then... Um, okay, sure. Yeah, let's do Ordo Saxon. Yeah. That gave me Metallum. Nothing. I guess we just have to discover some aspects, and then it'll give me something else. Let me let me read that a little more closely again. The component aspects are consumed. And there's kind of, you need wait. Okay, primary research. You need to be carrying a set of scribing tools and paper for this step. All right, that that has nothing to do with that. That's a there's a there's a break there. If you open your thumb, you'll see. Oh no, that's how you spell pursue. Uh, flashing square or round icons represent primary researches. If you can read their title, instead of seeing strangers, you're simply able to click on them. Paper and ink will be... Okay, I see, I see, I see. All right, cool. So we go back here. Got it, got it. All right, so I can start researching... Ooh. Things I'm interested in knowing about. That'll give me a research note, then I have to use those aspects to put it together. Okay, research expertise sounds good. Let's try it. Oh, this is cool. I like this. This is way more uh, interesting than the, um, the old system. Now, this is something completely crazy. I sort of skimmed this section and didn't make a lot of sense. I need to move aspects to this hex grid and get from there to there or something like that. Let's let's actually skim that one more time. Uh, paper hexagonal tiles and edges. Okay. If you see a question mark and you don't not do not know that aspect yet, and you will need to learn it first. Okay, so I need two more aspects before I can complete this research. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Um all right, so this is just sort of a, a bit of trial and error here. Did I already try this? No, uh, yes, that's Jellum. Perdicio and Ordo. I almost didn't see Perdicio, it's so dark. Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit of a mini game here. Um, yeah, all right. So... I'll probably stop that right now, but uh, we'll we'll come back and do some more of that at some point. Cool. Um, so, is there anything in here that looks like an infernal furnace? Let's see. This is just basic stuff. And there's thaumaturgy. It'll be in here. Okay, so better wands. And great wand core, okay. 
Alchemy. Talent Crucible. I don't know if it's actually showing me all of the, um... All the available things, or if there's more here. Hmm. I'm not seeing an Infernal Furnace, though. So I'm kind of going to assume that doesn't exist. Alright, cool. So that answers, um... That gives me at least a speculative answer to that question. Uh, so we will assume the Infernal Furnace didn't exist. I'll play this mini game a little bit more. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'll take the thermometer out, uh, research a whole bunch of stuff, get a lot of research points, and then we'll come back here and uh, play this game and see if we can figure out how the heck it works. Um, okay, so if that's all we're going to do with Thumbcraft right now, I sort of just want to take a real quick look at um, at Galacticraft and see what it's going to take to go to space. Just to get an idea of the sort of resources we need. So, I know we need a rocket. Um, just give me like a regular rocket. Okay, tier 1 rocket. Most basic one. Nose cone, heavy duty plate, rocket fins, tier 1 rocket engine. Okay. So it's a lot of tin and steel. Ah, okay, so here's something good we can do. Um, there are a few... Here, let's, let's do this. Can I, uh... Okay. If I could spell... Okay, Galactic Craft Core. Yeah, let's look at some of these machines. So the circuit fabricator... Yeah, okay. So I know we need a circuit fabricator. Because I've seen a lot of recipes that I'm going to have to build that involve it. So let's see if we can make one of those right now. Yes, okay, that's, that's the first machine we need to build. And we're also going to need to make something to power it. But okay, let's go ahead and just build that right now to get ourselves started. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this. I just want to sort of scratch the surface a little bit and see see what we're in for. So I need aluminum and wool and more aluminum and some other basic stuff we know how to make. Okay. So I have all this aluminum here that I haven't processed in any way. What's the best way to process it? Induction smelter is probably what I want. Yep, sure is. Okay. So that, that goes in the induction smelter. Oh, this uh, steam dynamo down here, I've noticed is actually continually consuming my fuel, even if it's not actually powering anything up. So that's annoying me a little bit. I guess I guess the uh, old um, thermal expansion steam engine was the same way. So I should do something about that and see, see about uh, better power generation options. That could certainly be an episode in itself, just looking at all the different generators. I'll bet I can't sleep. I gotta do something about that. Oh well, it's just a minor annoyance, I guess. Alright, so I think that's enough aluminum. We needed two buttons. A redstone torch. And what else? Six wool. Or some amount of wool. Okay, yeah, no, we're good. Um, something else. A furnace. Is that it? A lever. Okay, pretty close. Alright, so this should give us a circuit fabricator. Shut up, zombies! What did I get wrong? Ah. There we go. Circuit Fabricator. Cool. Let's uh, place this down somewhere. I don't have any good place for it, so we'll just put it in the middle of the room. Alright, and you are going to need some form of power, of course. Okay. Is it called a generator? Coal generator, Galacticraft core. Okay, that's simple. Copper, another one of these aluminum wires, and another furnace, and some iron. No problem. So 
So it was like this, right? All right. Now, having watched Space Chickens, I know these are a little bit uh, picky about how they connect to each other. I think I need to... I think I need a wire in between them. Let's try aluminum. Okay, that connected in both of those places. And I need to give this something to do. Is there a recipes button in here? No. Uh, so what did I need the circuit fabricator to do? Oh, um, I just remembered something totally unrelated to what we're doing. Um, but it was something I was talking about before and couldn't remember. This is the ore in the nether that I was talking about. Firestone ore. It's from Railcraft. And it's to get this stuff. So we're going to need a rock crusher to process it. I haven't found any of this. It sounds like it's very rare. And this looks like a really valuable resource. Also extremely expensive. Um, but it seems like it you, you charge it up and it stores heat. And then you put it in the bottom slot of something where you want to smelt stuff. And it'll just go. So um, that seems like a cool device to have around. But I need to find some of that firestone ore first. Anyway, that's, that's what I was talking about last episode. Or... Whenever that was. Alright, um, I'd like to do something with the circuit fabricator this episode. I know... Uh, I was looking at it before. I knew I needed it for the next machine, but what was the next machine? Let's see if we can figure it out here. It wasn't the refinery. We don't need that yet. Compressor. That was the one. Yeah, okay. We want the compressor in order to make compressed ingots. That's right. We need that. Okay. So basic wafers made with a diamond, two raw silicon, redstone torch, and redstone. Okay. So let's make that. Holy crap, these zombies. <laughs> I'm going to go murder all of them and then sleep. I'll be right back. Are you serious? Look at this. Just look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I know there's more that got by me. Seven, eight. Okay, you're looking at me. Nine, ten, eleven. Let's follow the trail. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Where are you guys even coming from? I mean, I guess this big dark space over here. I'm just going to have to put a lot of torches over here. I've, I've heard there's a, um, this thing, Magnum Torch, apparently can stop mo uh, monster spawns in a very wide radius. I'm going to try building one of those and just stick it over here and uh, see if that does the trick. Gets rid of this uh, zombie army that visits me every single night from this direction. Yeah, that's going to be a good idea. All right, are they all out of the area? No, there's still lots. Well, they'll burn up soon, so I guess I won't worry about uh, killing them. Just deal with their moaning noises for a little bit longer. Are you real? Oh yeah, you're real. Okay. Looks like he wasn't, wasn't even there. Okay, right, so we're uh, fabricating that circuit. Do I remember the components? I think I do. We have our diamond, we have that, we have the raw silicon. Here we go. Diamond, silicon, redstone, redstone torch, and you need some power. Do I have any charcoal? I'm sure I have some over here in the coke oven. All right. Pretty sure charcoal can go in the coal generator. Mm hmm, mm hmm, that's going. I think you just feed this fuel and it, it uh, goes off and does its thing. Let's make sure that's true. This has to heat up, then it'll start generating. Okay, so it consumed another one, generating, running idle, running idle, running idle. So this probably has to get to five kilowatts. Let's just give this another piece of charcoal just to make sure it keeps going for long enough. Okay, 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 here we go. We're making a wafer. I see, cool, so that's that thing's also charging up. 
Good. Good, 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 good. Yay. All right. Oh, we made three of them. Very cool. Okay. And those will get us onto the compressor. All right. So like I said, I just wanted to scratch the surface of Galactic Craft here. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it because this is already getting kind of long. Um, next time, we'll probably do a lot more of the same stuff. Just advance with uh, Thalmcraft and Galactic Craft. Um, we'll need to go to the end at some point, but I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. Anyway, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.